How to Spend 3 Days in Porto, Portugal This video provides a detailed 3-day itinerary for visiting Porto. It includes recommendations for activities, lodging, and timing. Find everything you need to plan your trip in the sections below. Porto is a charming city that distinguishes itself from Lisbon and the Algarve. With a unique contrast that becomes apparent as soon as you step off the train. During the walking tour, we took this one if you're interested in which we highly recommend. We repeatedly asked our guide about what makes Porto feel so distinct from other regions in Portugal, especially those to the south. Although it is not as popular as Lisbon nowadays, Porto is definitely worth visiting. It can be part of your Portugal itinerary or a weekend trip for Europeans due to its great food scene, fascinating history, and famous port wine. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for future videos. How many days do you need in Porto? We recommend spending three days in Porto for your first trip. During our own three-day visit, we found it to be the perfect amount of time and experience what makes Porto unique especially in comparison to Lisbon, where we had traveled from. To fully experience the main attractions of the city, it is recommended to allocate two days and an additional day if you wish to discover the nearby Douro Valley. Where to stay in Porto? If you're visiting Porto for three days, it's recommended to stay in a central location, especially if it's your first time visiting. Based on your preferences, you prefer a location that is within walking distance to the main landmarks, restaurants, bars as well as major transportation hubs for your upcoming trip to the Douro Valley on Day 3. Our top recommendations for neighborhoods that meet these criteria are Ribeira and Baixa. Ribeira, romantic and close to the river. The old town of Bordeaux has an area called Ribeira that includes the medieval harbor and riverfront. This neighborhood is famous for its vibrant facade and numerous restaurants and bars. These places have large terraces that offers a spectacular view of the Douro River. The Exmo Hotel is a chic boutique hotel that offers roomy accommodations with stunning views of the city and river. Certain rooms even private balconies or terraces for a more intimate experience. Additionally, guests can enjoy delicious food and cocktails at the hotel's fashionable bar all day long. Descobertas Boutique Hotel Porto Discovery's Boutique Hotel Porto is a small design hotel that can be found in one of the oldest and most characteristic streets in Ribeira. There are 18 rooms, each of which takes inspiration from a place that was reached by Portuguese navigators during the Age of Discoveries. Baixa Central and packed with great food and drinks, Baixa is the vibrant city center of Porto, also known as the downtown area. This neighborhood is centered around the Avenida dos Aliados, or the Avenue of the Alleys, and is home to significant landmarks like City Hall and the Cathedral. Baixa has a trendy and cool vibe, attracting Porto's young and hipster crowd who gather in a cozy cafes during the day and enjoy the bustling nightlife when the sun sets. Fabrica 55 offers modern and stylish studio and one-bedroom apartments. They come with fully equipped kitchenettes and are located on a quiet street just a few seconds away from some of the top tourist spots in Porto. The location is incredibly central. Selena Porto this hostel is located at the center of Porto, and it's full of energy and opportunities to socialize. Depending on your budget, you can either choose a private room or a dorm. The hostel provides fun activities, tours, and parties for its guests, and it also has a communal kitchen, movie room, co-working space, lively bar and nightclub, and large garden courtyard. How to plan an amazing 3-day Porto itinerary you can experience the best of Porto in three days. This includes exploring the historic city center and enjoying a wine tasting in the beautiful Douro Valley. Here's a quick overview of the itinerary below. Day 1 – Introduction to Porto's Historic Center Day 2 – The Cathedral, Ponte Luis One Bridge and Villa Nova de Gaia Day 3 – Day Trip to the Douro Valley for this itinerary, we will assume that you arrive the evening before and have the three days to explore. Day 1 Downtown Porto and the Historic Old Town 
The first day of the itinerary involves exploring the historic city of Porto, consisting of the Seibasha and Riviera districts. Begin your journey with a guided walking tour to gain an understanding of the context and history of the location. We almost always begin our time in the city with a tour guide, and for a few reasons, we'd highly very recommend that you begin your first day in Porto with a tour guide. You can first get a sense of the city and view many of the important landmarks by taking a walking tour. Also, you'll discover more about Porto's turbulent past, which includes everything from Napoleonic invasions to Roman and Moorish occupations to the Portuguese Civil War. Also, a tour offers you the chance to interact with local and gain insightful knowledge about the city, including helpful hints for visiting the main attractions as well as where to eat and drink. Try a Bifana at Conga. You'll undoubtedly be hungry and eager for a well-earned lunch after a hard morning of sightseeing around the city. Therefore, it's time to experience the Bifana, a specialty of Portugal. Traditional Portuguese sandwiches called bifanas are made with soft bread roll, thin slices of marinated pork, and lots of mustard and piri piri sauce. Although its exact beginnings are unknown, sandwiches are currently one of Portugal's most popular fast snacks. Grab a pastel de nata for dessert. If the bifana didn't fill you up, finish your meal with a traditional pastel de nata, a Portuguese dessert. Climb to the top of Clarigos Tower. After lunch, it's time to ascend the 240 steps of the Clarigos Tower to burn off the pork sandwich and pastel de nata. The grand bell tower of the lovely Baroque church of the same name is called Clarigos Tower. One of the most famous structures in the city is the church which was built in the middle of the 18th century. The Tower of Clarigos is the tallest in Portugal, standing at 249 feet or 76 meters. It is easily visible above the rooftops while wandering around Porto. See some beautiful tiled churches. If you haven't already noticed, Porto has many beautiful tiled churches to discover around the old town. This is one of the things we love the most about Porto. So grab your camera and check out these churches adorned in traditional Portuguese azulejo tiles. Capela das Almas One of Porto's most popular landmarks is the small chapel with blue and white tiles featuring scenes from the lives of saints. The church is renowned for its striking appearance that is often photographed by visitors. Igreja de Santo El Difonso There is a Baroque 18th century church located at the summit of a hill in Old Town. The church is adorned with blue and white painted ceramic tiles known as azulejos. Sunset at Meraduro da Vitoria End your first day in Porto by visiting Meraduro da Vitoria, one of the best viewpoints in the city. It is situated on top of a hill in the heart of Old Town and offers a memorable view of the sunset. It is free to visit. Day 2 Say de Porto and Vila Nova de Gaia On the second day, you'll visit two of Porto's famous landmarks, Say de Ponto and Ponte de Dom Luis I, the main bridge in Porto. Before going to Vila Nova de Gaia on the south side of the river for an afternoon of port tasting, Porto Cathedral Visit the Porto Cathedral, or Se de Porto, as it is referred to locals to start day two. The largest Roman Catholic church in the city is the most significant place of worship and is located on the top of a hill in the Old District. One of Porto's oldest structures, the Fort Light Cathedral, was built in the 12th century and has undergone numerous renovations throughout the years. The church's remarkable blend of Baroque, Romanesque, and Gothic architectural elements is what makes it so distinctive. Walk across Ponte Luis I Bridge. To access the upper walkway of the Ponte Luis I Bridge, proceed into Calzada de Vandoma and then Ave Mara Perez from Porto Cathedral. One of the city's most iconic sites, the Ponte Luis I Bridge spans the Douro River to connect Porto and Villa Nova de Gaia. Designed by German architect Teofili Seyrig, who was mentored by French engineer Alexandre Gustav Eiffel, designer of the Eiffel Tower, the Ponte Luis I Bridge was an impressive construction. Upon its completion in 1886, it became the world's longest metal span bridge and was considered a marvel of architecture. Meraduras of Vila Nova de Gaia 
Soon after entering Villanova de Gaia from the top of the Ponte Luis one, you'll come to a number of breathtaking lookout sites, or Meraduros, as they are known in Portuguese. The expansive terrace of the same name hilltop monastery from the 15th century is known as Miraduro da Serra do Pilar. You can see the Ponte Luiz 1 bridge from this vantage point, as well as the old harbor below and the Porto rooftops on the opposite bank of the river. Port Tasting in Vila Nova de Gaia Visiting one of the historic port cellars is a must-do in Vila Nova de Gaia. Numerous lodges offers tours and tasting that you can participate in by either walking up or by booking in advance. We visited Graham's, a port lodge that dates back to the 1800s and is one of the most renowned names in the industry. During our visit, we had a great time touring and tasting. After returning from Portugal, we organized a port tasting session with friends at home in the US and surprisingly found Graham's 10-year-old Tony at a local Trader's Joe. Walk back through Villa Nova de Gaia. Explore the neighborhood at your own pace by taking a walk through Villa Nova de Gaia after you finish at Churchill's. Day 3 A day trip to the Douro Valley. On day 3 of your itinerary, we suggest taking a day trip from Porto to Douro Valley, which is located nearby. If you can only manage one day trip during your visit to Porto, we highly advise making it this one. The Douro Valley, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, is situated 100 km east of Porto. It is famous for its many vineyards and wineries, which produce port wine. This region is recognized as the oldest determined wine region globally. Moreover, the stunning countryside dotted with vineyards offers excellent hiking routes and features picturesque towns and villages located on the meandering banks of the Douro River. The terrace vineyards in the Douro Valley are a highlight and reminded us of coffee farms in Colombia that also utilize the mountainous landscape. This technique is unique to us in the context of wine making and creates stunning views. We suggest taking a guided tour of the Douro Valley. The tour will take you to Douro Valley and you'll get to enjoy the beautiful view on the way to the first winery. At the winery, you'll get a chance to learn about the winemaking process and taste some wines produced locally. After you finish your visit to the second winery in the afternoon, you will enjoy a one-hour river cruise along the Douro River. During the cruise, you'll have the opportunity to partake in Porto Tunico's cocktail and be charmed by the captain. The day trip concludes with a relaxing journey back to Porto. Why should one opt for an organized tour instead of visiting the Douro Valley independently? The reason being that the region can be quite challenging to explore on your own. You can take a train from Porto to reach the Douro Valley with stops at Peso de Ragua and Piniao being quite popular. However, it's important to keep in mind that the public transportation options in Douro Valley are limited, which could be a challenge if you don't have a car to get around. With restricted transportation, your exploration will be mostly limited to towns and immediate surrounding areas. When to visit Porto The ideal timing for a three-day Porto itinerary depends on your vacation preferences. Are you looking for the best chance of warm and sunny weather? Or are you okay with some rain to enjoy the city when it's less crowded? Typically, Porto has a milder weather than southern Portuguese cities like Lisbon and the Algarve. However, the strong winds in Porto can make it feel quite chilly during the winter and spring seasons. We went to Porto in the autumn, which had pleasant weather with sunshine and warmth. The leaves were turning color and the summer crowds were beginning to decrease. Nonetheless, each season has its advantages and disadvantages. Summer is the warmest season with an average temperature of 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit while it is cooler and easier to bear than Saturn Portugal. It also coincides with the peak tourist season of July to August. Therefore, expect larger crowds and higher prices during this time. Fall We love the time of the year in Porto when the weather stays warm till September and October. The crowds of tourists are thinning out and trees along the Douro River are turning golden. Moreover, it's the harvest time in the Douro Valley and the wineries are busy picking grapes to make port wine. During the winter months, the city becomes quite gray and rainy, with an average temperature of about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. 
As a result, most tourists avoid visiting at this time. However, this does lead to less crowds and lower airfares and hotel rates. In spring, Porto begins to warm up, but there may still be some rain and wind. However, you can expect fewer crowds compared to the peak summer months. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.